If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. When Getaxian Probe was banned, I decided to take the opportunity to move away from Simic, in fact. Not that the deck isn't still good. You can replace Getaxian Probe with cards like more Spell Pierces, Distortion Strike, Slip Through Space, Seer and Vision, Sleight of Hand, etc. The deck still is playable. But I wanted to take the chance, the opportunity, to switch over to Selesnia, in fact. So I'll be giving you that in just a second. We don't really need to introduce this one, do we? Good old Glistener Elf. If you've ever seen Infect before, you know what this does. T1 Glistener Elf. Enough said. Alright. Next we have another, you kinda know what this does, Ink Moth Nexus. If you're running an Infect deck, period, you run Ink Moth. If you're running a green Infect list, and that's most Infect list, you run Glistener Elf. But what if you're running a white Infect list? Well, you could include, say, Ikerclaw Mirror or Necropede. Of course, those could go into any Infect list. But if you're playing white and you want to add a white one, do you add Lost Leonin? No, that's just one more point of power for one extra mana. And no evasion, no protection, nothing like that. Rather, I run this bad boy. This is Priest of Norn. Yes, it's three mana. Vigilance, in fact, it's a 1-4. Four toughness, that means that it survives Lightning Bolt. Now, Bolt is still the most commonly played non-land card in Modern, and it will be for the foreseeable future. So if your card can survive Lightning Bolt, well then you're good, right? Well, it's not quite that simple. This is three mana, and while we can get that out on turn two in this deck, we can't also hold up protection for it, but the fact that it protects itself is really, really sick. It's where it's at. It also, by virtue of being 3 mana, makes Fatal Push's job just a little bit harder, but what we care about is that it doesn't die to the most commonly played non-land card, not just removal card, non-land card, in the format. Next, I'm running one Viridian Corruptor in here, for a number of reasons. If you don't have Getaxian Probe, then you don't have as much draw power. If you don't have as much draw power, then you're going to have to be a little bit more redundant with other pieces, or you'll replace those with other draw cards. Well, I'm green-white, I don't really have other draw cards. So, for instance, I'm going from 12 creatures to 13 with Infect. Just one more, and of course, this by virtue of destroying artifacts, is good in the Affinity Match and a few others. It has 2 power and 2 toughness, and you may or may not be surprised at how often that extra point of toughness comes into play. And last but not least, we have good old Noble Hierarch. Shoutouts to this Judge promo. I'm gonna miss you. This is, if it were just a ramp card, it wouldn't be good enough. Bird's Paradise is not good enough for the deck. If it were just Exalted, then it wouldn't be good enough. But it's both together, and so it's definitely, definitely good enough. Just gonna show off that shine for a little bit. Oh yeah. And of course this lets us play pay white, which will matter of course. Now, those are our creatures. What about our pump spells? Well, we start off with four that you've come to know and love. Might of Olcrosa. Again, if you're running a green infect list, you have four Might of Olcrosas in modern. That's kind of a given. If you play it on your turn, or rather during your main phase, plus four plus four. At any other time, it'll protect you from Colagon's command, it'll protect you from gut shot, weird things like that. But what you care about, of course, primarily is it's bigger than giant growth when you play it on your turn. Which is, of course, when you're going to attack. Next, we have our protection suite. We have four vines of Vastwood. It's not technically hexproof. I, I said protection. I don't mean technical prote protection, you know what I mean. Plus four, plus four if you kick it. So one mana saves your creature, two mana kills your opponent. Or at least that's how I like to think that it often works. And because I'm an especially cautious Infect player, I'm not the kind that goes in for the kill on turn two at all the time. 
I want to hold up protection, well, defenses for my creatures as much as I possibly can. And that includes four blossoming defense. I've seen anywhere from zero to four, I run four. I want to be as cautious as I can. If I play the turn one Glistener Elf, it's either because I know that my opponent's on a deck that doesn't have the inability to kill my creatures, often one that tries to kill me quickly enough, like Ad Nauseam, or I have a hard read that they don't have removal in their hand, or I have a lot of creatures in my hand, and so it's okay to try to rem get rid of some of the removal spells by letting, say, a bolt or a fatal push hit the first one. Now, we don't have Gitaxian Probe, and so therefore we're disincentivized to run as many copies of Becomements. I'm only running two. Eight fetch lands and zero Gitaxian Probes. I don't really want to run any more. You don't want these to be dead in your hand. And without the ability to fill up the graveyard awfully quickly, they can certainly be. Now, that being the case, you'll notice I'm also not running Mutagenic Growth. And there are a number of re there is a number of reasons for that. One of those reasons would be when Lightning Bolt is good, Mutagenic Growth is not. All other things being equal, because our Infect creatures tend to start off at one toughness. So Ink Moth, Nexus, and Glistener Elf start off and Blighted Agent and Simic at one toughness. And so if you Mutagenic Growth plus two plus two, they still die to Bolt. That doesn't really do you much good at all. Now, if Kolagon's Command is a good card, now we're talking, we're cooking with gas, but otherwise, I'd prefer to run something else in that slot. I don't feel like I, this is the kind of deck that wants to just quickly beat the opponent down. Simic could, Mono Green could, Selesnia, I like playing a more mid-range or control-oriented game, and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. But because we want to protect our creatures even more, uh, so if these are our pump spells, we have a couple copies of Apostle's Blessing. Now, I have run the full four in here. I am that kind of player. However, target artifact or creature you control gains protection from artifacts or from the color of your choice. Which means that if it's a colorless non-artifact, also known as an Eldrazi, or that one dragon from Dragons of Tarkir that was colorless and not an Eldrazi, whatever, no one, no one cares about that one. Otherwise, we're talking Eldrazi. And if Eldrazi are real, then Apostle's Blessing is blank in the deck. Not technically blank, it can still do something, but that's why I moved it down to two. Depending on what your meta is, you may want to go for more, but in a general meta, I'm only running two. Now, at least those are good in Affinity, but what about Emerge Unscathed? This one doesn't even help in the Affinity match. Well, no, but it's one mana protect your creature for two turns. So often how you'll play this is your opponent targets you with, say, I don't know, not you, your creature with a Path to Exile, a Lightning Bolt, a Fatal Push, a Vapor Snag, a Dismember, yada 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 yada, you get the idea. You'll protect the creature for that turn, and then on your turn you'll rebound it, give them protection again, say from whatever color their creatures that would defend, that would block are, and go for the kill. This is a glorious little two-for-one if you like to think of it that way, but again, part of the reason that this doesn't see more play is because it doesn't work on artifacts and it doesn't work on Eldrazi. And you may have seen those around every now and then. Affinity is still tier one, after all. As such, I don't want to run more than one, but I do run it in part because we have another card that'll be showing up in just a minute. You know what? I'm gonna skip ahead. It is Wild Defiance. Now, these protection cards tend not to be so good for getting her creatures bigger. You can imagine why that is. But with Wild Defiance, it pulls double duty. For one thing, it protects our, uh, our creatures from cards like Lightning Bolt, or potentially something like Dismember if they target Priest of Norn. However, we can do better. Cards like Emergence Gave will trigger Wild Defiance. And so that means that you can actually use something like Unkicked Vines of Vastwood, or Blossoming Defense, or Emergence Gaze, or Apostle's Blessing as legitimate pump spells, as giant growths. And that's important, not just because it shores up the burn match, but if we're going to play more cautiously, we want to still be able to get some utility, some pumps out of that. 
and Wild Defiance is how I found I'm best able to do that. Now I said I took out two Apostles Blessings. That means that I'm playing with some flex slots here. Something I've tried out, but I'm not 100% confident on. So forgive me, this might be wrong. I understand that. I haven't gotten enough playtesting. And I want you, I, that's my disclaimer. I want you to know before you go out and buy, before you start speculating on these things. Uh, I am trying out Selesnia Charm. Okay, okay. So yes, Selesnia is my favorite guild, but I like the versatility of this card. The first mode is the most obvious. It's a worse predator strike on the first mode. Plus two, plus two, and trample for target creature, and that's fine. That's obviously not ideal, but the fact that it can serve as another mainboard pump spell, I think makes it make the cut, but it's the other two modes that we really care about, right? We can exile a target creature with power five or greater. Now in some matches that does actual nothing and we defer to the first mode, but in some matches, that exiles Reality Smasher, that exiles Worm Coil Engine, that exiles Primeval Titan. Those are all legitimate, those are real effects. And by the way, the Tron match is not as good for this deck, uh, in my experience, as Simic Infect used to be, and probably still is. A lot of that is because we are slower. I'd say that we're at least a turn slower, if not a turn and a half. And so being able to exile a Worm Coil Engine can help you to make it that long in the game. And then the last mode is put a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield. I found two uses for this primarily. The first one, although the meta at Tapstart isn't developed enough to have Liliana of the Veil showing up, you can make it and sacrifice it to Liliana as part of the edict effect. The second one is a 2-2 will block Goblin Guide and Eidolon of the Great Revels in the burn match. And yes, it'll also block Taylor Swift Spear and make them have to use a uh, an instant, or, well, an instant, in order to uh, trigger prowess and keep the Swift Spear. Okay, true, but it does something there. It gives you some mainboard hate against the burn match. In other words, individually, these modes would not make the cut. Together, I think that it does. Although two is probably too many. And again, with Wild Defiance. Plus two, plus two turns into plus five, plus five, and trample, and that's nothing to laugh at. Now, what I do like more, but less, is Dromoka's Command. <laughs> this seems like the better card, right? And I'm inclined to agree. The modes are prevent all damage target instant or sorcery spell would deal this turn, so prevent target lightning bolt from killing your creature, or burn to your face, etc. Target player sacrifices an enchantment, which is useful for bogles and for blood moon. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, which is almost always one of the modes you'll pick. And then target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Okay, this one's the trickiest. So, often I see when Dromoka's Command is, play, is played in Modern that we're targeting, or we're using the last two modes. I want to add a counter and I want, I want to fight a creature. Okay, that's fine, but... My creatures are starting out awfully small. Yes, with pump spells, I can do a lot more than that. And in that case, yeah, combo. But without them, we're talking about, say, a Glisten Rail, for instance, turns into a 2-2 and fights another creature. That doesn't often end well. Now, I have, out of desperation, had to do that against a Malira before, and there's no cost for doing that to a spell sky, for instance. And if you make spells get one of the targets, it can't redirect any of the others. So they can't take the plus one plus one counter from your Glistener Elf if you make it one of the fight targets. Now, that being the case, because the fight mode tends not to be as good in Infect, I only run it as a one of. Maybe that's wrong, maybe there's more utility that you can get out of it, but I haven't found it to be useful enough to cross that threshold. Again, though, maybe I'm wrong. But if we want removal that doesn't involve fighting... Well, okay, so I like Path to Exile as much as the next guy, but I understand that Path to Exile is sometimes just a two-for-one. You play the path, yeah, you get rid of their creature, but you give them a basic land. This isn't Legacy, where some decks do not run basic lands. No, Modern has adapted. Every Modern deck. I would be surprised if there are any competitive modern decks that don't run at least one or two basic lands so that they can play cards like, or play through cards like Path to Exile and Blood Moon. 
That being the case, what does Infect not care about? The life total, right? So, in Legacy you can see Swords to Plowshares come out of the sideboard in Infect, and I've played this myself. Because you don't care about their life total. On that note, may I give you... Oust. Put target creature into its owner's library, second from the top, its controller gains 3 life. So again, we don't care about the 3 life, that's not relevant. Puts it second from the top, so indestructible, doesn't matter, none of that matters. If you can beat your opponent within 2 turns, then you're golden, right? That's what's important here. So you play this, and then you have one more turn after that. You have this turn, and one more turn to beat them. But we're in fact, we can be fast enough that we can do that. So that isn't too much of a downside for us. Now, I've experimented with this, and between my testing with it, and Christopher Long, shout outs to you Chris, saying that this is, this card is for real, this is legit. I, I think that it's underrated. And in fact, I actually, if it weren't for the fact that Simic Infect were, was so good, I think that you would have seen Infect pick this up earlier. And if there's ever a Bant Infect list in Modern, please, please, please try out Oust. You don't have to give your opponent an extra land, you don't have to advance their game plan that way. Instead, you give them life that, frankly, you don't care about, and you deal with their creature temporarily, but Temporarily is usually all you need. I'm looking at you become immense. Now, another card that you could try is Condemn, but Condemn only deals with attacking creatures, and when it comes to Spellskite and Malira, it just doesn't get the job done. So, I know Condemn is, is real, it's a card, but it's a trap. Uh, Oust is better, and maybe Path is better than both, just because it has so much more. It exiles the creature, it gets rid of it for good. But if at all possible, I'd like to try to take downsides that don't really matter. Think Invigorate, for instance, in Legacy Infect. The downside does not matter, you don't care about giving your opponent life. Swords to Plowshare, same thing. Now, with all of these instants and sorceries, one way to take advantage of them is with Rune Chanter's Pike. This is my replacement for, I used to run Nyssa, uh, the three mana one from Oath of the Gatewatch. Or was it Battle for Zendikar? Somewhere in that block, I think Oath. In any case, I used to run her, now I'm running Rune Chanter's Pike. Makes my creatures all big, makes all of my creatures a threat, <laughs> of course, even without using any more pump spells, and First Strike, which matters for Death Touch, matters for creatures that could kill mine on the swing back, I don't know, I don't know. It, it matters occasionally, but yeah, it's just permanent buff. It's a permanent buff. As long as you have two mana, you can keep throwing that around. If they deal with your creature, you still have it, uh, the next one bigger, and then the next and so on. And lastly, I have a Planeswalker. <laughs> so you may be familiar with seeing something like Nyssa come out of the sideboard in Simic Infect List. This is something that some pros have tried out. I'm running a Johnny because, well, for a number of reasons. You can't run a Johnny, obviously, in a Simic list, so you have to resort to Nyssa. But I think that a Johnny is better than Nyssa, colors notwithstanding, and so since we can play both, we choose the better one. A Johnny survives the lightning bolt test. A Johnny forces your opponent to use removal on your creature if the plus one plus one counter would put the creature out of range for, say, a bolt. Uh, it forces them to act on your terms, and that's obviously a good thing, that's where you want to be, because if they're casting the first removal spell, then your protection spells work a bit better. If you have to go first, if you have to, say, play a Might of Old Crosa first, well now you've used up one card in your hand and one mana that you don't have to fight over later in the turn. Uh, in any case, the minus three, the middle ability, Target creature gains flying and double strike until end of turn. You don't have to just make your creature a little bigger, you can make it a lot bigger. See Might of Old Crosa here for killing them that turn. Flying and it's dealing 10 damage. Can they beat that? And then if you happen to get to a stage in the game where you ult, it's put X22 white cat creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is your life total. Usually that wins you the game. I think that's a given, but usually that just wins you the game. So, Ajani is actually pretty sick. From my experience, Ajani's pretty sick. 
Obvious caveat is obvious, it's slow, it's three mana, but this is a slower infect list, admittedly. It's made to be almost more of a mid-ranged list that has the ability to kill quickly, say turn three, but that isn't your primary way of winning. Now for our lands. We're going to start off with a Pendlehaven. Yes, a Pendlehaven. Only one. Of course, it's the case that there's an opportunity cost for having more than one of a given legendary land. But you'll also notice when you look at our creatures, obviously noble, but we have some that aren't 1-1s. We have a 1-4 and a 2-2. Actually, we have four 1-4s. And so we don't get quite as much out of Pendlehaven. As such, we only run one. It's still important, but it isn't as important. In a similar way to a Johnny, you can use Pendlehaven to force your opponent to start using the removal earlier than they would like to. Next we have, as you'd imagine, Temple Gardens. I'm only running two. You could run three and then two of another land I'll show you in just a minute, but I'm only running two. Admittedly, though, that's because I only have to. Your mileage may vary. Or at least I now only have to. You'll get to that in just a second. Uh, next, I have two basic forests. You can pretend that this one's also a foil. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we want to be able to fetch against burn, and we want to have enough for Path to Exile from our opponent. Next, we have a 1 of Dryad Arbor we can go and fetch out for Liliana, or just to give us another surprise blocker, or occasionally as a real attacker. It can happen, believe it or not. Now, you can choose any eight green fetch lands that you want, but I'm choosing uh, Misty Rainforest, there's four, and four Verdant Catacombs. But any green fetches will do. Ideally, you play two, 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 and two, so two of each for playing around Pithing Needle, but that's not really a thing. I, it's technically optimal, but no one aggressively plays the turn one Pithing Needle and names the fetch land they think they have in your hand. Especially now that Probe isn't in the format, right? That's... But it is technically optimal. And then... So I mentioned I only have two Temple Gardens. How about Horizon Canopy? <laughs> okay, so this is, this is a silly card. I mentioned the Burn Match. Um, we have Selesnia Charm, we have Dromoka's Command, we have cards like those, but this does hurt, admittedly. <laughs> um, makes either green or white, and you can pay one and tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card. We use this for the same reason that Bogles uses it, actually, which is later on in the game when you've run out of gas, you can use it to refill. When you don't need your lands or don't need as many lands anymore, you can just sacrifice a Horizon Canopy. and. In a similar vein to my saying that we need more creatures because we don't have as much draw power, we need more lands as well. And so I've gone up to 21 lands. So 13 creatures, counting the Inkmoth Nexi, 21 lands, counting the Inkmoth Nexi. And then the rest of this is just filler to go in and, well, make us able to beat the opponent, protect our creatures, play the long game as with a Johnny and Rune Chanter's Pike. Uh, now, for our sideboard, okay, so this is all, and there are, there are games on the channel, you can see this in action. The deck list is slightly different in the ones that I have recorded, but you can see it in action. It it works. So far, the deck has only lost to Malira and Company, and judging by the name, you can see why. Um, that's not to say that the deck is perfect. I understand. I'm still experimenting with what cards go in, and this is especially true of the sideboard. But what I am sure of is that I want to have a strong affinity match. Because now we're not half a turn faster than affinity. At least, we're at least a turn or half a turn slower than they are. And so I'm running four nature's claims. Kind of a dead giveaway. Only one mana. We want to, we don't care about giving our opponent life. The only card that really gets hit by that is Chalice of the Void. I'm sorry, there's not much we can do about that other than play something like I guess we could go to, oh, a Croson Grip if we worry about counter spells, or we could go towards more Viridian Corruptors, but I want to hit enchantments too. Any sort of naturalize effect. I mean, nat natural state? Eh, I don't know. Okay, so then we have <laughs> Stony Silence. Oh boy. 
Oh boy, unless it's that Tempered Steel variant of Affinity, this wrecks them. See, we get to play white, and that means that we get the best sideboard cards in Modern. And so, if we can shut down Arcbound Ravager, and Cranial Plating, and Dark Steel Citadel, and Mox Opal, and Spring Leaf Drum, and, 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 then, yeah, we're going to take advantage of that. Why wouldn't we? Uh, next we have, so three things happened. Fatal Push was printed, Gitaxian Probe was banned, and Golgari Grave Troll was banned. All of these had the effect of pushing control more to the fore by slowing the format down. And so, because control is better, I like running a one of carrion call in the sideboard. So this does a number of things for us, so it can't be hit with Inquisition of Kozilek, which is sort of a good problem to have, I suppose. Uh, it puts out, it's an instant, so we can play it at the end of our opponent's turn, and then if they counter it, we can just play a creature on our turn as well, so we can overtax their counter spells. We put out two infect creatures which means that we tax their spot removal. So Carrion Call does a lot of things a little bit well, but put them all together and I think that you get a lot. This is something that I haven't been crazy about running in the sideboard of Infect for some time, but now I think the opportunity is here again. I think that the time is right. Now, one of our graveyard hate cards we have is Graph Digger's Cage. So, of course, it deals with say, Collected Company and Court of Calling as well, and this is important for fighting Malira, but it hits Snapcaster Mage, it hits um, Unburial Rites, it hits Gifts decks, in other words, it hits cards like these, and uh, yeah, sometimes you just need, of course it doesn't do anything against Living End, but, but that's fine, that's something that we can deal with, with other cards that I'll, actually, I'll skip ahead once again and show you, we have Rest in peace. Oh yes. We're playing white. In modern. We get rest in peace. I know that Dredge is gone, but there's still enough decks that use this, that use the graveyard, that we're okay. And of course, you're citing out Become Immense if you're citing in rest in peace. Next, I'm running three Path to Exile. Now, I was just beating down on Path to Exile a moment ago, so why am I bringing it in from the sideboard? Well, for one thing, if you expect the mirror, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a dead giveaway, right? This breaks the mirror. Uh, but also, if you're expecting Malira or Spellskite, these can come in. You need to get rid of that. I say need. You probably need. I've only done it once or twice, beaten an onboard Malira or Spellskite. It's, it's tough to do. Or beaten them without removing them, I should say. I've never been a big fan of running Dismember in the sideboard of really any non-black list. I don't like having to pay a bad snuff out. I don't want to play a bad snuff out. But Path to Exile is the premier white removal spell in Modern for a reason. It does its job and it does it very well, right? Yeah, you do give them a land, but sometimes you have to. But I want to save it for those matches where you have to and use oust otherwise. Oh boy. It also does good work against, say, Burn, for instance, or against Jund, or Junk, Obzon. In those cases, you're citing it in as well, because you need to be able to deal with their creatures, especially creatures that are shutting your game plan down. Even if it just means creatures that are big enough to keep blocking you. Lastly, I bring them in against Eldrazi, because there's not really much else that I can do against them. Yeah, I have Selesnya Charm to take out Reality Smasher, or a big enough Endless One, but not Thought Not Seer, that doesn't work there. So I need something else. Plus, Matter Reshaper doesn't die with Path to Exile. And of course, Drowner of Hope is a thing. Next, so what do I do against Burn decks? So I just mentioned Sighting in Path to Exile, and that's fine, but... Often you'll see Kitchen Finks come in, in, say, Simic Infect. Now, Kitchen Finks is not a bad card. Kitchen Finks could potentially be the three and a half to four to one, right? You gain a total of four life, and you jump block and kill two of their creatures. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? But I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Kitchen Finks. For one thing, it seems so narrow. I can't think of any matches where I'd want to bring in Kitchen Finks other than for Burn, and for another, it doesn't deal Infect. 
And yeah, you can beat them down with a 2-1, that's true. And maybe with as many counters as we have in here, say off of Dromoka's command and a Johnny Call of the Pride, maybe Kitchen Finks is better, because I could do even more off of that. But what I've been trying, and this is something that I used in Simic Infect as well, is Pulse of Marasa. This can be just a 3 for 1, especially if they don't have any creatures on board. You get a creature or land back from your graveyard at instant speed, and you gain 6 life. So if you think of getting a creature or land and 2 lightning bolts, that's a 3 for 1. So that's pretty good. Unfortunately though, it doesn't actually do any blocking on the turn, at, unlike Kitchen Finks. So maybe it's not quite as good? I admittedly, but it's also a little bit more versatile. It has utility in other matches, and so I'm trying it here as well. If you're playing against a control deck, Pulse of Marasa can serve in a similar function to, say, Sylvan Scrying. You can bring in Sylvan Scrying, which also could be in the main or sideboard actually, to go and get another Ink Moth Nexus or Utility Land. If they keep dealing with all your creatures, Sylvan Scrying is a creature. Well, Pulse of Marasa serves a similar role, although it is a bit more expensive, you need to already have one, but it can get creatures in addition to Ink Moth, and it's an instant. Okay, so lastly, lastly, what are we going to have? Well, I'm not, I just mentioned, I don't like playing cards that are out of color. I don't want to have to play Dismember, for instance, unless I'm black, because I don't like that opportunity cost. I don't like having to pay life for it. Getaxian Probe is a good card, but I'd rather not play Simic Infect if I... Or rather, I should say, I would rather play Getaxian Probe in Simic Infect rather than any other, because it minimizes that cost. But, sometimes you do what you have to do, and that means Spellskite. Yeah, it's always going to be too life for me, and I understand that. But, the Bogles and Infect matches get wrecked by this. And if it it's not as good in burn, I understand Noble Hierarch can pay blue, but turning a lightning bolt from two to three? That's or excuse me. <laughs> other way around. From three damage to two damage. That's not much. I think it might merit inclusion there though, because it protects my creatures, but it's mostly for, again, infect and bogles. I don't know how this deck beats Bogles unless it top decks the luckiest Dromoka's command, and then when they go to enchant their creature with Daybreak Cornet, and only one other aura is on there, you make them sacrifice it and you just get the blowout. <laughs> That's about the only way that you're getting there off of a, a Dromoka's command. But Spellskite kind of wrecks their day. It's a very technical magic term, it wrecks their day. Alright, and that's the list as I have it right now. Again, one more time, I cannot stress to you enough, this is still experimental. As many games as I've played with this, and I do very much like the way that it's played out, and again, its record so far is all but one and undefeated. It's lost to Malira, uh, that Collected Company combo deck. Okay, but that being the, the case, I do like it. I am hyped for it. I feel, though, that there's some secret sauce that it's missing. There's something that I have overlooked. I'm still not quite confident about the Selesnya charms, at least not two of them. I feel like there's another card that I could put in, and I don't know what it is, but I think that one of you might. So if you do, please leave it down in the comments below. I read those. I really do. <laughs> Even with YouTube's new notification system, I really do read those, so please. Let me know if you see something that I might have missed. And then lastly, lastly, one more thing. Get one more nice long look at these. Because I will not have them for much longer. I am in the process of selling my magic collection. You may have seen a video a while back where I said that I was selling my magic collection. Well, thank goodness, at the time, I didn't have to sell the whole thing. I sold an awful lot of it, including my... I, you may have noticed you didn't see any uh, legacy duels. <laughs> you didn't see a lot of legacy cards that, after that. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because I didn't own them anymore. Uh, but now I am having to sell... It, custody cases are expensive. You, you can imagine how expensive contested custody cases can be, and 
As much as I like this game, and I really do, it's been great to me for the past three and a half years since I started the channel, and years before then. My baby means so much more. <laughs> Jeez, the most precious thing. So, alright. I'm gonna be a little bit weird here. Mwah. Mwah. I know who's getting them. I hope you all treat him well. I'm gonna miss you, Glistener Elf. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Alright. And I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>